In this video, we are going to do a short introduction to statistics. We will also talk about misleading graphs and the types of data that we can have when we are studying statistics. First of all, statistics is the study of data, and it can be represented in lots of different ways. It's usually represented by a graph, so sometimes you'll see a bar graph or a pie graph. You might see a dot plot or a stem plot. There's lots of different ways that statistics can be represented. And another thing that's important to know for statistics is that there's lots of different ways to analyze statistics. So you might be doing some comparisons, you might be figuring out the mean, median, or mode for the data. There's all sorts of different things that we can analyze when it comes to statistics. What we're going to start with, though, is talking about misleading data. When we're looking at graphs and trying to determine whether or not data can be misleading, there's a few different things to look for. First is we're going to look at the labels. Second, we're going to look at the numbers. Third, we're going to look at the scale. And then fourth, we're going to look at the context. Being able to identify misleading data is a very important skill. It's something that you might run into when you are reading the newspaper or when you are looking at different data in terms of test scores that you have. There's lots of different ways that data can be represented in a misleading way, and it's important to be able to recognize those different things that people do so that you can interpret whether or not data being presented to you is accurate and valuable. So let's look at a few examples. Here's the first example that we're going to look at. This is an example of bowling averages, and you can see that we're comparing three different people here on the bottom. And when you first look at this data, it seems like there's a little bit of a difference between how these different people do. It kind of seems like Hilde isn't nearly as good as Emily, but if you look over here to the side at the scale, you can see that in fact their scores really aren't as different as they appear at first. And one of the big issues is the way that this is scaled. This is just counting by fives, but it starts at 110. The fact that it doesn't start at zero and then count up consistently, there's a huge jump from zero to 110, leads this to be misleading. If we compare these two graphs, you can see that at first, it seems like the graph on the left, the data isn't really that different. It doesn't really have a very steep slope to go from one bar to the next. But if you look at the second example, it seems a little bit more steep, a little bit more extreme. If you look at where those bars are actually landing, though, you can see that really they have about the same height to them. You know, if you look at this first bar, we're just kind of right around four here, and it's the same here that we're right around four. If you look at this middle one, we're kind of right around five, and this one's right around five, maybe just above. And then this one's just kind of below six, pretty close to six, and this one's also below six. So these bars are really representing pretty equal numbers. It's just that their scales are quite different because, again, this one starts at zero, but this one jumps up and starts at four. So this graph would be misleading on the right-hand side because it doesn't start at zero. Here's another example of a couple of graphs where if you look at the data, it seems like there might be a pretty drastic difference between the house prices in 1998 and 1999. But in reality, we're just going from 80000 to $82,000. $2,000 in terms of the price of a home is not really that big of an increase. So this massive increase that it suggests it is isn't very accurate. This is another example where it would be best if it started from zero so that we could see that really the two bars aren't that different. Here's another example where we've got some different data. This time we are starting at zero here. So that's a good start that we're starting at zero. But this data is a little bit misleading because of the way that the graph is scaled. You can see that it goes zero, one, two, and then it jumps to four. And then it has an even bigger jump to eight and an even bigger jump to 16. Instead of going up by the same consistent amount, that data is making big jumps. And so that's affecting the way that the graph looks. Here's another example of some data, and if we look at these different bars, you can see that... All right, here's a different type of graph. You can see we've got this key at the top where we've got these different animals that are all representing 50 people. 
So when we first look at this data, we've got the dogs that are representing 50 people apiece, the cats are representing 50 people apiece, horses and the fish are as well. When you first look at this, it seems like you might really have the most horses, but really if you know that each of those is representing 50 people, we just have a total of 150. Same thing for the fish, these are each representing 50, so we've got a grand total of 150. So even though it might seem at first like there's way fewer fish than there are horses, really you've got the same total number. It's just a matter of how big the sizes are for those, those different animals at the top in the key. Now this has the same key where each of the animals at the top is representing 50 people. Um, but this time it's a little bit more accurate because you can see that each of the animals are about the same size. You know, each thing in this column is about the same size. Everything's lining up here. So it's a little bit easier to tell when things are scaled correctly that really the thing that you have the most of is the cats. You've got the most going across here. And since everything's scaled equally, it's much easier to tell. It's no longer misleading. Next, we're gonna talk about different types of data. You've seen some misleading graphs, and so now we need to know how we can sort and arrange and present data visually. So the first type of data that we have is called categorical data, and categorical data are things that can be divided up into groups. So an example would be something like your favorite color could be an example of categorical data. Gender, race, um, groups, types of different things like types of shoe brands would be an example of all things that can be divided into groups or can be categorized. Another type of data is quantitative. So quantitative data is things that can be counted or things that can be measured. So some examples of this would be things like age, height, size, maybe the length of something. So maybe the length of time that you spend on your homework. Anything like that that can be counted or measured would be considered quantitative data. One really easy way to tell the difference between categorical and quantitative data is to think to yourself, can I average that data? If it's something that you can find the average of and the average makes sense, that's going to make it quantitative data. If it's something that it doesn't make any sense to take the average of, that would be categorical. So if you think about like your favorite color, you can't really average your favorite color together. So that would make that categorical. Whereas if you ask people their ages, you could take the average of the people's ages and that's going to make it quantitative data. So let's look at a couple of different examples of things and see whether these would be categorical data. So if you think about your zip code, you know, your zip code is a number, but does it make sense to take the average of different zip codes? Well, it doesn't really make sense to average that. Calendar months can be listed as, um, as numbers as well. So like January can be represented with one and February can be represented with two. If you surveyed people and asked them what their favorite month was and they answered from one to 12, it wouldn't really make sense to take the average of that. Um, phone numbers would be another example of something that appears to be a number at first. Well, it is a number at first, but if you try to average it, it just doesn't really make sense to average it. Same with your locker combination or your ID numbers. So even though these things initially appear to be numbers, they are not quantitative data. They're categorical data because it doesn't make any sense to average any of those. Next, we're going to look at the difference between individuals and variables. These are two different vocabulary terms. So individuals are going to be the objects described by a set of data. So if you look at this graph that we have here, or this chart that we have here, the example of the individuals is going to be the drink names. So we've got brewed coffee, cafe latte, cafe, cafe mocha, cappuccinos, ice brewed coffee, and chai lattes. Those are going to be the types of drinks that we have, and those are going to be what we call individuals. Variables, on the other hand, are the characteristics of those individuals. So the characteristics or the variables are going to be all of these things over here. So things like what type of beverage is it? Is it hot or cold? How many calories are in that beverage? How many sugars? How many caffeine? How much caffeine is in it? Those are all characteristics of those types of drinks. So those are called variables. 
if we take a look at this example, um, we've got a few different students' names that are listed here. We also have their homework teachers and then how many absences that we've had. What we're going to do is to try to figure out what the individuals in this data set are. So the individuals in this data set are going to be the names of the students. And the reason that it's going to be the names of the students is that their homeroom teacher is going to be a characteristic of that student and the number of absences that they have are also going to be a characteristic of that student. So this here at the beginning is going to be what our individuals are going to represent. And then these two things are going to be our variables because they both are characteristics. So if we were going to choose one of these answers, we've got two variables and we've got, um, we've got to determine next whether those things are quantitative or whether they are categorical or not. If you think about the name of your homeroom teacher, it doesn't make any sense to average that. So the name of your homeroom teacher is going to be categorical data. The number of absences that you have is something that you could average, and so that's going to be quantitative data. So we're going to have two variables here, but only one of those variables is going to be quantitative.